The wait is finally over. The 2023 Xperia 1 is finally here. This is the Xperia 1 Mark V. The biggest differences here is, well, actually there's a lot of big differences here from what we've seen before. They may seem subtle at first, but the changes that we have in here, well, let's start with this. This introduction that I'm talking to you guys in right now is not only being streamed directly into the Xperia 1 Mark V, but it's being recorded on the Xperia 1 Mark V as well, internal storage not just from the main camera, but also from the secondary camera. So what that means essentially is this is now a 4K display with 120 frames per second with the capabilities of not only being a display to your camera, but also be able to record the feed from your camera. This is TK and this is the best features or the main changes of the 2023 Xperia 1 Mark V. Let's check them out and let's check out all the glory that Sony's brought to us on their brand new Xperia 1. <music> Like and subscribe and make sure you hit that bell icon so that you're always notified to whenever we have new videos on the channel. So here we have it, the brand new Xperia 1 Mark V. There's a few changes overall differences from what we've seen last year. I'll start off by first saying overall here, let's look at them side by side. They have a lot of similar aesthetics. You'll notice they look very similar, but you'll notice that there's a quite a bit of a difference on the camera stack. Same placement, but slightly wider. And of course, a little bit different also on the back. And we'll talk about some of the big differences, primarily on that main camera sensor in the middle, which actually seems like it's grown from what we've had last year. We still have a 5,000 milliampere battery. We still have wireless charging, NFC tag at the top. On the right side, we still have the fingerprint sensor as well as the power button sitting on the side and right next to the volume rocker. And of course, we still have the power, well, basically the camera button, the ability of pressing and holding one button and launching our camera and be able to use it to shoot the content with it as well. Now, let's go ahead and shut this off. Uh, the same panel that we're looking at here, both 4K 120 frames per second. Front facing camera is still a 12 megapixel camera. We notice that the ridges on the side here, let's go ahead and bring this closer. It's a little bit different than what we had. This is closer to what we saw with the Xperia Pro I than what we saw last year with the Xperia 1. The Xperia 1 Mark IV is definitely smooth, very easy to grip, but on the Xperia 1 Mark, I, well, Mark V, we have a better grip because of this ridges that we have in there. As far as the top, we still have a microphone and of course the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack supported with the quad DAC that we have built in here, so very nice. Also capable of providing us the ability of using external audio into this device. The SIM tray with the dual SIM, uh, SIM cards or a single SIM with an SD card are still positioned on the bottom. Next to them obviously is the microphone and the USB-C. Now this is going to be USB-C for data, charging, as well as video input. Keep in mind, that's what we talked about at the introduction. This device supports video input, but not only that, now we can record with from this input directly onto our device. Now as far as the display, we're still looking at a 21 by 9 aspect ratio, 6.5 inch dis uh, display that is a 4K 120Hz refresh rate OLED panel. And of course, from the processing power, we went from the 8 Gen 1 to the 8 Gen 2. Both of them are obviously the latest and greatest from Qualcomm at the time of these devices releases. The biggest difference here is that we went from a 512 gigs of internal storage to a starting level of 256, at least in the US model, still supporting SD card support all the way up to one terabyte, 12 gigs of RAM to support the device. IP65, IP68 rating, all of that good stuff. Both are supporting that 12 megapixel camera that's gonna be giving us the ability of shooting 4K, also 4K 60 frames per second on both the front facing and of course the rear facing camera is gonna also shoot, of course, at a higher frame rate with 120 frames per second. This is going to obviously start taking us back to what we see here on the back. Now, before we talk about the camera, I do want to mention that there is a textured material on the back. It is still glass, but the material uh, that they treated here makes it a little bit more grippy. And of course, it just has a little bit of a different feel on it. So just be aware once you're holding the device, it's actually glass, although it feels like it's plastic. Uh, the main thing, of course, that we see here when we start looking at the camera stack is Last year's Xperia 1 Mark V or Mark IV had a triple camera stack with the 12 megapixel camera sensors on each one of them. This year they've changed the stack a little bit. They went basically with the 12 megapixel on the front, which we talked about. The 12 photo lens as well as the ultra wide lens are still 12 megapixel camera sensors. And they're still gonna give us the 12 millimeter roll the 16 millimeter for that ultra wide shot and 85 to 125 millimeter uh, basically focal lengths with the adjustable uh, basically zoom on the 12 megapixel camera. That's gonna be here with the telephoto lens. We lost the time of flight sensor. That's something that they're no longer using. And they're relying more on the actual cameras to provide us uh, the depth of field information that they're not getting from the time of flight. But the main sensor now is technically a 52 megapixel camera sensor that basically has an effective uh, readout of 48 megapixels. And it bends down to 12 megapixels, which means we have a better source and better content creation option here with the camera system. And as well as also new camera stack processing uh, capabilities that we have. So we're going to talk about that as we get in there, but that's generally the main benefits that we're getting in here. So although on paper the changes may not be so substantial, 
Believe me when I say, at least if we're starting off with the 8 Gen 2, not only do we get better thermals, but also better performance. And of course, it provides us a better experience overall on an Xperia from Sony. So that was the quick comparison between what we had last year and what we had this year. And of course, the biggest difference of will be is the fact that the starting price is about $1,400 this year over what we had last year at about $1,600. I would say probably the biggest thing you'll notice out of the box is the fact that the starting capacity on the storage is 256 gigs of storage as opposed to the 512 what we had last year and the 12 gigs of RAM is going to be basically even more than enough. We still have the ability of expanding storage so that's going to be the expansion slot at the bottom either you're using two SD card sorry two SIM cards or one SD and one SIM and that gives us the ability of going all the way up to one terabyte and that's going to leverage all of the storage capabilities that we get. Offload all your internal storage onto the main one and even there the 256 is more than enough. The biggest thing that I'll probably say also over but the main differences that we're looking here obviously is the camera applications are very much the same. We still have the ability of using Cinema Pro and Video Pro for content capture when it comes to video. Now of course the camera or the default camera app is still designed to be in standard mode. So when you first turn it on we still have basic mode and basic mode enables us to actually record using video and basically uh, well video and uh, still images using the most friendly UI element that we can get here. One of the biggest changes though is now we actually have profiles, the creative looks that give us the ability of using of AI basically, AI functionalities to augment the processing. So post-processing is finally coming to Xperia devices and we're able to customize the different experiences that we have in here. Now what we have essentially is uh, multiple options. So ST is standard finish, that's going to be the standard mode that we have in here. Uh, NT is going to be the lower saturation and sharpness and, and basically in subdued tone. So this is a little bit more the, uh, kind of like a, I would say probably higher sharpness and of course uh, lower saturation. So not as punchy as far as colors. Then we have the VV mode, which is basically it produces a highly clear image with bright and vibrant colors. So this is kind of like that social media, uh, uh, I would say exposure that you'd like to kind of get that color uh, effect there. Um, FL is going to be creating a uh, basically somewhat of a moody finish by applying some sharp contrast to the calm uh, coloring. So it's a little bit less uh, punchy as VV as far as the basically the high the vibrant colors. And of course, we also have IN, which is going to produce uh, contrast and saturated images like a matte look a little bit. And last but not least is SH, which produces a bright uh, atmosphere with uh, transparency, sh uh, softness, and vibrancy. So a lot of creative looks, a lot of post processing capabilities built into this. And one of the biggest benefits is obviously is the ability of now using the new UI element. You notice I'm actually switching over to the auto mode. We did not used to have this. We've been used to using auto mode in this format, which is the standard option. We will access all the lenses. Uh, of course, we're still able to access the wheel between the lenses, changing the displays, changing the different shots aspect, uh, you know, burst and all of that. You get all that information. But now, we actually have all of that information, more of a standard horizontal experience that we haven't had before. Last year, they gave us the ability of shooting this mode using the camera, but you were stuck for the most part in this format, even though you were shooting in the, uh, in the basically the vertical side. But the horizontal view that we have in here works great when we're shooting with the main sensor, but if we want to switch it down, now it works not only in this mode, but also we'll go back here. We're able to shut and shutter, uh, basically pro program priority, uh, manual mode, and MR, and all of these modes will be basically set. And of course, as usual, you can customize it and make it remember the last mode that you're in. Uh, jumping into the camera experience, one thing I will say before we leave here, um, under the basic mode, video recording on the front-facing camera is capped at 4K 30 frames per second. When we jump over to Video Pro, which is uh, going to give us the ability of jumping in, again, same thing, the front, uh, the horizontal and vertical uh, UI will match whatever format you're going with, and it organizes everything that you have in there. But we also have the ability of switching over to the front-facing camera. That's one of the main benefits. You can see it there. And the ability of jumping to not only 4K, but 4K 60 frames per second, baby. 4K 60 on all the lenses on this device is absolutely flippin' fantastic. And I'm sorry for using that word, but really, it is exciting AF when it comes to getting content creation done the right way with the right tools. Uh, we're going to talk obviously about some samples in here, but I want to take you outside real quick and show you a quick sample of the cameras, of course, on the front facing in 4K 60, as well as on the main sensor on the back. And we're also going to talk about that camera kit that comes with this. So we're going to start off with the front facing video experience here. Uh, there's a well, there's actually two ways of capturing video on this. You can always use this, uh, the basic camera mode, which will be ca basically capped at 4K 30 frames per second. And if you want to be able to push it even further, the 4K 60 capability is actually available directly within the Video Pro app. So you just need to switch it over to the front facing camera. This was an update that we saw with the Xperia 1 Mark IV. And now we're actually able to shoot all the way to 4K 60 on the front facing camera on the brand new Xperia 1 Mark V. Again, a good video and audio example with stabilization using the brand new device. Switching it over to the primary sensor on the back with the Xperia 1 Mark V. Now, 
big surprise. All of the sensors on the back can shoot 4K 60 frames per second. I'm just focusing on the main one, mostly because I'm holding this and I'm using it handheld. I could have switched over to the ultra wide, of course. Now the telephoto, the two options that we have in there obviously won't work for handheld, but this is a good example with the audio and video it comes from the brand new Xperia 1 5. The biggest benefit again, the new sensor in the center there, that's going to give us some of the best imagery. So this should be a good example of what the video capabilities, well, that you're able to do here directly using Video Pro. The last thing before I forget is we actually can get 4K 60 from all of the lenses, even the two telephotos, the ultra wide, the front facing camera, and even the main sensor. This is absolutely fantastic for Sony. And of course, the ability of using all of the sensors for your creative ways on the One Mark V. Now that was a quick sample of video from the front facing camera and the main sensor on the back. And one of the biggest things I will say, obviously, we're able to shoot at a higher resolution, we're able to do a lot more things with it. But the main thing that I would say is that new amp that's built into the front facing speakers that we have in here that provide us a slight improvement over last year, but still worth uh, worthy of having an improvement there done there. The headphone jack is still a quad deck supported headphone jack is going to be really nice. There's no question it's going to be the best audio solution. But for us that love enjoying our content from our phone, let's go ahead and play our, our favorite song. This is Alex Crindo Jumbo by NCS Release. And let's go ahead and start. Jack it up. Sounds really good, bassy. It has that depth that you'd expect from speakers, uh, almost like a regular boombox, and definitely can get pretty loud. Now, one of the biggest things that we obviously want to talk about on top of the fact that audio has been improved, and of course, we still have all of the capabilities. Remember, we still have the ability of using this as an external audio source. So I want to talk to you guys about using this with the vlogging kit, because this is something that supports it and it works really nice. We're going to go outside, we're going to use it, we're going to use that external microphone, and of course, using that display that enables us to actually see what we're doing with the main sensor in all of the applications. I can jump into Video Pro, I can jump into Cinema Pro. This allows us to be in the moment and also know exactly what's going on. So we're gonna do a quick test with the vlogging kit. Now I'm using this with the external display, the grip, and an external microphone that has a wind muff and it's a directional microphone. The benefit here is not only can I see myself using the best cameras on this device, but also I can see if there's audio, if I'm recording, how much time I'm recording, a lot of little information as far as, as well as the battery that's left on the actual uh, device. Now, with that being said, as you saw there, the audio sounded fantastic. I was using external audio with the headphone jack and also using the USB-C to be able to push out video to the external display on the back. Works great, easy to set up. Uh, we still have obviously the app, uh, application here, the creator mode app to be able to connect to our uh, Sony cameras, the external monitor app. That's how I showed you guys in the beginning, how I was able to record that introduction for us. So let's go ahead. Uh, so not only being a display to your camera, but this is the crazy part. This is clear, pristine footage that I'm able to literally just throw it directly into LumaFusion and be able to edit this and do everything I want with it. This is absolutely fantastic awesome. and one of my main benefits here. Uh, we still obviously have the access to the Google feed, the ability of going into the customization settings here. Uh, the under display, we're able to go in there and customize uh, what we've done in the past overall. So we have image quality settings. We can jump in, turn on, turn on. by default, standard mode is done there. Uh, of course, auto creator mode turns on for the specific apps. You can turn on creator mode to customize the experience as well. Uh, last but not least, of course, is uh, real-time HDR drive and then view image enhancement. So video image enhancements there. The white balance customization, you're able to turn it on and of course turn on the different customization levels that you'd like. High refresh rate by default, this device runs again at 120 frames per second. So keep in mind, really 4K goodness and high, th high frame rate, uh, dark theme, uh, lock screen, all the customization that you like to do in there. And of course, night light if you'd like to be able to use it. All the other options within Android, uh, <clears throat> and of course, all the other option customizations that we have with Android 13. And uh, the last thing I want to talk to you guys before is, before I forget, is the Music Pro app. The Music Pro app is still one of the benefits they introduced last year, the ability of recording high quality audio, but also the ability of actually processing this audio going through, and I'll link you guys to that video that I posted about that last year. But the overall performance here is the ability of having uh, audio channel separation and processing on the cloud using Google, uh, well, using Sony services uh, using Music Pro. Very nice, and of course, I see that it's continuing to this year. Now, of course, we're going to talk about gaming. We're going to talk about some of the main benefits that we have in there. Now, you know me, I love playing Call of Duty, and this is one of the best devices to play it on. Now, the game enhancer it has been updated. We now have the ability of seeing our refresh rate, well, the, basically the frame rate on the game, the battery percentage, and of course, how much watt, uh, 4.8 watts of what we're using, and the temperature of our device right out of the box. Uh, of course, quick access, we have a game mode that's built in there. You have balance mode, you're able to change it. Let's go ahead and turn off the option here. 
We're able to jump in and turn on performance mode. We're able to go in basically so here. We have preferred, performance preferred, and then of course we have the ability of going custom, and of course we have battery life preferred or balanced. And you can see how the different experiences are gonna change based on that. Focus, uh, sorry here, focus settings, uh, display and sound of course, a multi-touch screen recording or screenshot, and then record and stream. Those are the functions that we've seen before. So not only am I able to customize my recording, change the recording concept, uh, also change the refresh rate or the speed of the refresh rate on here. And of course, the ability of streaming directly out to our favorite streaming service is built in. And this is also supported in the display app. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, I do wanna mention that of course, Call of Duty Mobile is gonna work perfectly on this. There's not gonna be any issues with it. And uh, this is gonna also be something that I'm gonna focus on on a separate video for you guys, which is gonna be dedicated to gaming. So. Let's play real quick some samples here, obviously from my Call of Duty uh, session running on this device. And one of my main features that I love about that 21 by nine aspect ratio that we get in here. Now, I know a lot of people will say it's a long device, but actually that lends to be a much better gaming experience. We have HS power control that's built into the game system here that allows us to actually charge the device and or technically run the device on power using USB-C power over using the battery. So it allows us to actually run a little bit cooler. Couple that with the 8 Gen 2, the new thermal management that they have in there. It's still gonna give us a really good experience and it's gonna give us that extended experience without running hot. And that's really what we see here, an extended session about 30 to 45 minutes on, of course, Call of Duty Mobile running at high refresh rate wasn't causing this device to get very hot like what we had last year with the 8 Gen 1. Now, one of the things I do want to mention here, obviously, is the Geekbench 6 core and, of course, the ability of understanding that one of the other areas that Sony was able to make the, uh, I would say, the reduction in feature is it's basically doesn't supporting, it's, well, this version of this device doesn't support ultra wideband, so there's no UW 5G. It's all sub-6. So those are the speeds that you're seeing there uh, that I'm sharing with you guys is this is on T-Mobile in the LA area. And I'm actually getting pretty good and it's taking advantage of the mid bands of Sprint, the Sprint and T-Mobile acquisition. So the way this is actually turning out to be, I feel like for me, it works perfectly fine. I, I don't have Verizon as a carrier, so this doesn't really impact me. But if you are looking for ultra wideband, you may want to start looking either into the Pro I or some of the other options that are supported there. Now, that's pretty much how we see that in gaming experience, and that's definitely very nice. But of course, long or extended shooting in high refresh rate or high frame rate shooting, let's say 4K 60, we now have obviously endurance mode that's also built in into the system that allows us to run this device and allow us to tell the phone that I am having you in a hand, well, I'm, I have you in basically in a tripod and I'm not holding you by hand. And it allows the phone to run a little bit hotter than it typically would and allows you to keep Keep going uh, for well shooting 4k 60 video for a longer duration last year we saw that coming in primarily using it with the grip now we're able to customize it and of course get the benefit of that with our device so when it comes down to all of this and of course the camera stack that we have on the back um, I'll say this, that I haven't had the phone with me more than a week yet, so I've been testing it and doing a whole bunch of different things with it, but I do want to share some samples of images with you from this device. Uh, the experience that we're getting here is very familiar. This is Sony at its best, and what I feel like that every year we get these nice little additions and very few, I, I'll, I'll say this, we did lose some storage capacity here. Last year was definitely a nice bump. But I will probably say if you were worried last year that the $1,600 price point was too high, Having it down to $1,400 with a 256 and expandable storage and a headphone jack, again, things that typically don't exist at this price range or even in this category, is still absolutely fantastic. The ability of adding onboard storage, I, I don't know how to explain this, but this to me was a very big implementation that I really felt like this replaces uh, basically any kind of external recorder you can ever even get on the market because your phone is by default the thing that does everything for you. So not only are you able to record and it will match uh, certain resolutions as far as basically what you're able to shoot for, it doesn't do 720p, so you need to have a minimum of 1080p or higher resolution. And that's what I was shooting with uh, with my uh, 8mm here that we have in here. It's feeding in 4K footage from my main camera and overhead, but it transfers it over to 1080p. And that's why the resolution wasn't exactly as the same. But think about it this way. But you have to appreciate the fact that it's basically mixed footage, like ready to use footage that I can use to edit my content in LumaFusion, add a few things on top of it, some transitions, take out some of the dead spaces that I have in there. And all of the audio from that footage that I was recording there, because I was uh, funneling it through the A10 Mini, was always being used with the same audio I'm using with right now. I'm using my Rode uh, Video Mic 2, and that makes it so that even though I'm using my B camera, my A camera audio is the one that's there. Very nice. Like obviously if you couple it with the right tools, it's absolutely going to be fantastic. So leveraging whatever Sony camera or device that you're using that provides video output. So 
Hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you guys are exci as excited as I am about the Xperia 1 Mark V. And the reality is we're so excited. I mean, think about all of some of these things that are in here that are gonna come down to the Xperia 5 Mark V. And that's gonna be one of the other things that you're gonna keep in mind there. It's more nimble, it's smaller, but it's still gonna be as powerful. And I really hope that the main sensor transitions over. There's still gonna be more videos coming out here. So please let me know in the comments, which one would you like to be first? Is it gaming, is it photography, or is it a comparison to some of the other devices on the market right now? Like and subscribe and thank you very much for checking out this video. I wanna say thank you very much as well to Sony for allowing me to check out this pre-production unit and share with you guys uh, my opinions and of course uh, my experience after using this for literally less than a week. And please make sure to let me know in the comments what do you guys think. I'll see you in the next video.